Okay, so hello everybody. Um, yes, I'm Arthur Meller and I'm a or architect, as I have to mention. Um, I worked in IT for some time, yeah, I deal with customers uh, from different sectors. And today I want to talk to you about, about SAP. It's um, a special uh, component in every company and we'll see how Azure can, can help making this component better. So um, first let's think about what are the challenges of a current SAP uh, system, generally SAP systems. Where they are they are usually in the middle of the company, they are playing a key role in a, in a company's uh, infrastructure. Um, probably working silos, they are um, they're quite um, heavy components, I would say. And because of those two things, uh, the heaviness of the component and the criticality of the component, usually there is a lot of technical depth. They are just left alone somewhere in a deep in a in a data center, um, and they are just saying the, the what they're supposed to do. So could it be better? And we make those steps somehow more more modern. Of course, we can. Um, but what I usually hear from customer is, well, it works anyway, so why to change that? We use this up, we are happy with that, why to make some changes? And before we answer this question, I want to give you a story. I grew up in a, in a small house in the village. This is not my house, but quite similar. It's very um, present place. Arthur, I'm so yeah. sorry. Uh... We can hear you with small audio issues. Maybe you can try to reconnect your headphones or something else. So, is it any better? Uh, yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> it sounds good. Okay, all right. So, as I was saying, uh, a small house with tradition. It is quite an old house. It has a lot of warmth, a lot of good emotions, and a physical warmth. But um, fortunately, oops, next slide. This physical warmth comes from the very old coil, uh, coil stove that sits in the basement. And it do the job, right? You just put the coil there, you put on a fire, and it gives heat to the, to the to the place. However, my parents are now in their late seventies or early seventies, or other, and it's getting harder and harder to maintain this solution. Right? So the coal is heavy, and you have to just put it uh, into the basement. Then once a while, at least twice a day put it into the stove, and it's getting more and more um, um, difficult for my parents. So I advise them, why don't we just change this coil uh, stove into the modern solution, like a heat pump, for example, which will solve a lot of problems. But uh, my parents said, you know, it's an old house with an old uh, plumbing with the very old radiators that have a lot of water in it. And new technologies will not fit there. We just have to stick with what we have. But I did the research and I found a heat pump that is suitable for old installations. I convinced them to change this uh, heat pump, that changes uh, coil stuff to the heat pump. And now my father does not have to go to the basement anymore. And there is still warmth. And what's the story behind? Um, Usually I hear the same story from, from management uh, in the customer side about these SAPs. They sit somewhere in the basement, they do the job, um, they are plumbed to, plumbed, yeah, connected to, to various uh, systems in a company. And they say, it's very hard to modernize this setup. We, it's not worth. But now we will see how, how this uh, can be uh, changed with Azure. So we will talk about a little bit uh, about SAP, SAP migration drivers. We talked a bit about that, uh, but we will extend this. 
why do you choose Microsoft? That there are other uh, as I said, that are other uh, cloud providers. We will see what to migrate, how the SAP looks like, and how Azure can help you with uh, the architecture and extension of this um, of this. Setup. So first, first let's meet our enemy, or let's meet uh, SAP. How it look looks like. SAP systems are very complicated. And I need to state uh, at this moment that I'm not a BIP, a BIP uh, programmer. I don't know what is exactly inside SAP. I'm, a, I'm an uh, infrastructure engineer, an architect who knows how to uh, put this SAP system into modern uh, infrastructure. So there are a couple of layers that we have to um, keep uh, in mind. First is the presentation layer, which is kind of out of our scope because it's on the customer side, but it's important. So SAP has two primary ways of interacting with the system. First, let's call it traditional, is where you install a GUI on your uh, Windows machine or on your system generally, on your workstation, and you access the SAP system through this um, application. And there's also a more modern one, which is um, a web GUI, and you use just, just the web browser to access uh, the SAP, and it looks much better. On the infrastructure side, there are components like application servers. And it's worth mentioning, I will be repeating this a uh, few times, application servers are kind of a dummy components. They just serve the content, uh, but there is not much logic in it. Every logic is closer to data in the database. So SAP is a more database solution rather than application server solution. And there are components uh, that is underneath application servers, which are, which are um, central services, ASCSs. Um, to be honest, I don't remember exactly what ASCS stands for. Uh, everybody calls that um, central services. And there are two main components there. One is messaging server, which keeps the synchronization between uh, various uh, components together and the NQ server, which is called also uh, dispatcher. And this is a component that uh, takes the requests from customers, from traditional application or from GUI based um, uh, web based um, interface, and then routes it to the proper application servers. So it's kind of a, acts as a, um, as a load balancer, I'd say. And then we have database. And it's worth mentioning that there are two flavors of the database, the traditional one and the modern one. The traditional databases are like um, SQLs, DB2s, uh, Microsoft SQLs, and so on. And the modern one is the HANA database. Um, this setup can be constructed in a several ways. We can put everything in one server, which is on the left side of the screen, to the application server, the dispatcher, and the MQ and database on one server. It is used in a very lower environments, like very early stage development environment. But usually we will use the distributed um, approach when we separate each of the components into a dedicated servers. Now, there was a difference between traditional databases and uh, HANA databases. Uh, the difference is significant. Um, in traditional databases, we are talking about um, storing data in a database and loading the data when it's needed. So when the transaction is, uh, is happening, um, kind of seen database load some rows, some portion of the data to the memory and then make the uh, calculations to serve the transaction to the customers. Um, and it's generally uh, optimized for transactional databases rather than uh, analytic the all up uh, transactions, but sub can somehow manage to, to use the traditional approach with um, their solutions. Um, on the other hand, 
there are HANA databases, which are modern databases introduced by, uh, by SAP. And in this database, all the data reside in memory from the start. So it's much faster to uh, make the transaction, make the calculation, because the, all the data is in the memory already. But there are some caveats, some downsides of this solution. First is you have to have a strong machine with a lot of RAM um, to handle the, the, the database. Secondly is servers are starting up slowly. You have to load all the data from the disk to the memory. So the startup time is significantly longer uh, in SAP HANA than in SAP uh, with traditional databases. But there are some also benefits. So, um, so speed is, uh, is one thing. HANA is optimized for the OLA transactions. So the performance of, of analytic transactions uh, are much, much um, better. Um, why Microsoft? We have AWS, we have Google. Why choose Microsoft? Well, basically, I would say because of the fruitful relationship it was between those two companies. They are working together for years. Of course, it's not always a love uh, relationship. Um, there are some fights, there are some um, ups and downs in this relationship. But over the years, both companies managed to create um, solutions that are compatible to each other, that supplement to each other, that uh, makes the experience more, more richer. And we will learn about that uh, experience in, 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 in a moment. Both of them created some call, kind of uh, the em Embrace initiative, where they um, create on one side uh, components that, that, that uh, extend each other. So Microsoft uh, creates some, some solutions that um, add some value to SAP and SAP, of course, at some features that um, use the benefits of, of Microsoft um, uh, products. They also work on the architectures, reference architectures. So Microsoft Publishing is publishing uh, reference architectures for uh, SAP solutions. And SAP um, creates uh, templates, um, materials, uh, demos that you can use on the, on the, on the cloud. To be honest, I don't remember exactly how it's called, but uh, SAP has this um, marketplace of uh, um, HANA solutions or generally SAP solutions where you can provision certain setups to your uh, cloud providers. It's not on the Microsoft, you can use it on, on Google and AWS as well, but with Microsoft, of course, it's, it's more optimized and more um, yeah, optimized, it's a good word. Um, it's, it's also worth mentioning here that um, both companies use their own products um, uh, exchangeably. So Microsoft is running a lot of their SAPs, their um, critical components on SAP systems. And SAP, uh, on the other hand, runs a lot of their systems on, on Microsoft Azure. So there's mutual uh, communication between those two companies. And in the next slides, we will see how the Azure uh, from Microsoft can make SAP more reliable, more um, modern. One thing meant to mention that I forgot to tell you about HANA and, and traditional systems is that um, SAP decided to move their customers to HANA completely and stop uh, supporting traditional databases since uh, 2024. That was the main driver for SAP to move the customer to, 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 to HANA. Um, customers uh, made some objections. There were a lot of pressure to SAP that this is too, too, too small time. So SAP decided to extend this time for five years. So now we have time till 2029 to move to SAP. But after this time, probably uh, SAP will stick with the decision and stop supporting uh, other um, systems than, than HANA. 
And what does it mean for customers? Well, they need to upgrade the hardware in the first place. Traditional systems works on uh, systems where there's a lot of disk space in less uh, RAM memory. And HANA works uh, in, a system, in, a, in a service where there is a lot of memory. And for the moment, it's quite hard to estimate um, how much memory is needed and how much performance is needed. Of course, SAP is giving um, great tools for calculating uh, that kind of uh, uh, parameters. They use um, uh, quantity called SAPs to calculate how much uh, capacity service has to need, has to have. Uh, but anyway, it's it's hard to buy new hardware, right? Because you, you make the prediction, you buy the hardware, and usually when you buy hardware, it's, it's like five to three years contract. And during this time, or sooner or later, the circumstances, the requirements can change. You may adjust your system, or increase your capacity, and then you have to exchange the server. With cloud, it's much, much easier. As we all know, cloud is where you pay what, for what you consume. And you can change this um, uh, platform that you are paying for very easily. All right. So let's take a look how SAP can be hosted on Azure Cloud. So we have Microsoft Azure as a cloud. We have two regions. Why two? Because SAP is a critical system and we have to think about the resiliency of the system from the start. So instead of just building one solution on, the, on one data center, we already uh, start thinking about disaster recovery. So that's why we have two regions. Um, this session assumes that you have basics of Azure. So I will not be explaining what the resource uh, for the reasons uh, for the re regions are. I assume you know that. And we have a customer side, and we connect this customer um, infrastructure to Azure with Express routes. We have two options to connect uh, customers to cloud with the VPN and Express Route. And with so much critical uh, system of the SAPs, we advise to use private connection, which is, uh, which is uh, Express Route. And we connect it to a dedicated uh, network, um, which is called uh, Gateway Network. And then we use separate uh, subnets for um, each of the components. So first we have an uh, application um, subnet where we have the application servers. They are called net weavers in, uh, in SAP nomenclature. And they could be or should be more than just one uh, application server just to distribute the load. Then we have central services. And again, this is the uh, best practice to have more than one um, uh, server that hosts the central services. Um, and this is, and here we have one uh, difference between those two. ASCS, central services, is a component that can work only on one server at a time. So only one instance, one virtual machine can serve requests and the other has to be in a standby mode. While the net weavers, they are not connected to each other. Remember, they are kind of a dummy component, so they just receive requests, connect the database, and serve the transaction to the customer without need to be synchronized with others and so on. To um, exchange data between state between ACS components, uh, central service components, we use um, mechanism like uh, Linux clustering, Windows clustering, and so on. And we have to keep uh, in mind that only one server has to be active at a time. So we need to put some kind of a peacemaker solution that will keep the cluster um, running in a um, master-slave uh, configuration. We also use uh, tools like Stonic, for example, to be sure that the other uh, component that is not functioning well will not uh, get requests, will not play the role, just, just uh, be canceled. Stony stands for should the other node in the hat, if, if you didn't knew that. 
Then we have the um, NFS subnet. And NFS is one of the uh, solutions that we can use to make the, the, the cluster for ASCS. And we'll talk about the other solutions uh, in upcoming slides. Um, but if we decide to use the uh, traditional NFS, of course, we have to cluster this as well. And finally, we have a DB cluster, the database cluster in the, from the sub perspective, the main one, the main component. And here we have a primary database, HANA database, and a secondary database. Those two are, are synchronized with each other with HS or HANA system replication. It's a very effective mechanism to synchronize data between uh, SAP components. And it's worth mentioning that uh, in this case, when uh, both uh, replicas are in the same region, we use synchronized uh, replication. So data are, are replicated in synchronous mode. And the last subnet that we have in this equation is the management subnet. Uh, and here we have things like jump host, backup servers, and identity servers. And identity in terms of the SAP itself. So you can store um, identities of SAP users or in an external repository. So that's why we have the identity um, component here. Of course, every subnet is protected. So we have network security groups just to secure um, those subnets. In the other region, we have quite similar approach, but with what slight um, difference. You see, in a primary region, the icon for the servers are different. So those servers are not, not um, provisioned. They are not running uh, in a normal scenario. They are in a standby mode. And they are being synchronized with uh, ASR, Azure Site Recovery, where each server gets the, the state of the virtual machine replicated to another server and it's ready to be started in case of emergency. Two differences. One is that uh, we are not replicating database. It is um, due to the transaction and the velocity and the characteristic of the uh, of the HANA database, it's better to have a dedicated server running on the um, secondary uh, region and replicated with uh, HANA system replication. In this case, the replication is not synchronized, it's asynchronized. Of course, you may think about uh, cost here. So uh, it's again, it's, it's the matter of how fast you want to switch. It is possible to, to have this server uh, to be smaller a bit. And just just be able just to be able to receive the data, um, store the transactions, and in case of uh, disaster recovery scenario engagement, uh, replace this with a new machine. But remember what I said before: SAP HANA requires significantly more time to start up than the traditional database because of the need to load the data into memory. With management subnet, uh, most of the servers are, are small servers, so they are replicated in ASR, uh, and then they are running on the on the uh, secondary node. One thing you may be wondering about the backup service that are uh, present in both um, regions, because it's your choice, a customer choice, whether we will do the backup from the HA replica or from the DR replica. It doesn't matter. It just uh, it just the decision um, that we might. So we, we might be using backup service in either of this, those regions. And Azure gives us a lot of additional things, like um, like, like uh, AD, like recovery block, NetApp, which was mentioned uh, as a oh, not mentioned. It is an option to to. Um, to be used um, instead of uh, NFS uh, system. We'll talk about it a little bit more. And of course, a lot of add-ons like, uh, like data analytics uh, and things like that. So now, when we saw the general architecture, what are the details? And what to pay attention to? What are the small things that 
makes the difference. Best practices, I would say. So first best practice is to put all the components into one subscription. <clears throat> and it's worth mentioning here that in a SAP work, the, there are two, um, two terms that we have to be familiar with. So one is the landscape. And landscape is the so-called the business domain of SAP. We can have landscape dedicated for HR, for production planning, um, and so on and so on. It's just a business domain. Within business domain, we can have environments which are called a seed, a system identifier. And each of this um, environment within the landscape has its own seed, own number that uh, is hard-coded into SAP itself. So it's good to uh, good practice to have all these uh, components related to at least one landscape in a separate subscription. Um, and it's also recommended to split uh, the network as we saw before into uh, separate subnets and use disaster recovery from the start and not be adding that later. And what are the landscape uh, recommendations um, and, and, and a few? Um, each of the seed, so um, environments like pro development, testing, should be put in a separate resource group. It is not recommended by SAP to use shared services and, for example, have a networking dedicated uh, resource group and, and so on. It's approach for having everything related to a particular seed in a one resource group. So that's the, that's the, um, the principle. Then it's of course, elimination of single point of failure. And we start talking about that from the beginning. We are not using single servers, but we are duplicating them, right? Application servers go uh, in numbers, whatever you want. Uh, they are just dummy servers. Uh, AES, yes, at least two, um, which are clustered, and database, at least one HA uh, copy and one, one disaster recovery um, copy. And of course, common sense, uh, use quality, um, QA um, environment very close to production setup, so that when you introduce changes, you can, you can uh, test it on a production-like like setup. And SAP is publishing um, a lot of useful information on their, their site. So this is the SAP note that um, um, the list of support project products uh, from, from Azure, because not every product from Azure is certified to be used with SAP. SAP has this uh, strict poli policy, politics, that uh, they need to certify servers, solutions, in order to be supported by SAP. It's a kind of a business decision over there. Um, unfortunately, you have to have um, you have to have an SAP account to access those those notes in most cases. Um, but when you are a customer of SAP, you have those uh, on your hand. With network, um, it is recommended by SAP and Microsoft to separate traffics between customer traffic, business traffic, and the management traffic. So the one that you use to access the SAP, to make, make the maintenance, or do the backups, in the synchronization of, um, uh, of databases. So those traffics need to be separated from one another. And we do this by just adding another uh, network interface to the systems and, and secure that appropriately. By the way, if anyone has questions, um, feel free to ask them during the presentation, or of course you can wait until the end where we have we'll have a Q and A session. It's, it's whatever suits you. With network, is um, it's good practice to use a network um, acceleration, uh, network accelerator, yeah, 
uh, which is available in some um, groups of service, some families of service, especially with M series, which are dedicated to um, to SAP. It is worth to use that. It improves uh, it improves the performance of the network uh, interface. Uh, we also mentioned that um, SAP itself is giving the, the load balancing feature. This is dispatcher, so we don't need to have uh, to have um, dedicated load balancer on the application on the Azure side. Um, but it's good to use uh, network security groups to secure networks to limit the traffic between uh, sub networks, and it's also um, good practice to use hub and spoke um, architecture when you connect to Azure with dedicated um, hub network where you have uh, jump holes, when you have all the um, utility tools and then uh, host the landscape on dedicated uh, network connected of course with, uh, with peering to the hub environment. Each of the landscapes would not then see each other. Now let's talk about our compute. We mentioned M-series, and we mentioned also that not every service in SAP can be or is certified by, uh, by SAP. So M-series is the most popular uh, family of servers that we can use with SAP. They are memory optimized. So in version one, we, have, uh, we can have up to four terabytes of um, of RAM, four terabytes uh, in database in size. Um, and with version two, it's up to uh, 12 terabytes per single server. So it's, it's quite a um, quite large amount of uh, resource of RAM. If this is not enough, then Microsoft can, can uh, supply the dedicated server, which is called um, a large instance, and they are like 24 terabytes or so. This is a little bit different approach than in the virtual machines because um, of the dedicated server. They are connected with internal express routes, for example, and they are purely for you, and they are not. Um, um, you have to have a reservation. You have to buy the server, let's say buy the server or make the commitment. Uh, larger than in the virtual machines, but you have the you have the capacity. We also have the smaller servers like E series or D series even, and they are more dedicated to lower environments like development, like uh, testing environments, and so on. They do not have so much features like M series has, um, so we don't use do not do not use them in the uh, in the production uh, scenarios. How to how can we know which server is appropriate uh, for our environment? And I mentioned that SAP is giving a lot of tools we can use. Um, they 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 have the the um, ecosystem of SAP products very well designed, and the basic uh, tool is uh, the Quick Sizer tool from SAP. It is something that you can run on the on-prem, and it will calculate how many SAPs and uh, subs uh, should you use to to on, on the other server and this tool also can advise um, um servers or, 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 or i would say the, the proper servers for microsoft so m3 version this and this and um, d3 version this and this or large server version this and this so quick sizer is a First, uh, the choice for you to uh, make a calculation of how much of the capacity you need. It also um, calculates the um, network um, layer as well. So you have the full report on how to um, size the, the, the infrastructure. Sergi, you are uh, making some background noise. Can you go to Can you too? No, I can't. No, thank you. I admit. Uh, thank you. All right. So what are the recommendations from um, SAP 
um, according to, to virtual machines. Of course, do the proper calculation. Uh, calculate how many subs you need. Uh, Quick subs will give you um, first uh, recommendation and use that is usually the good one. Uh, secondly, use only the certified um, components from Azure. You, of course, can use uh, different uh, virtual machines, uh, sizes and families, but in this case, SAP can uh, reject your support requests. So it's, it can be used uh, in a non-production environment, but in a production, we'll stick with the certified ones. Um, you can think about shutting down and starting up components, virtual servers, but be aware that HANA is starting quite slowly. So if you finish your tasks, your job on 1 a.m. at night and start at 6, probably it's not worth to shutting down the, the, uh, the SAP system. But if you shut down your company for a weekend, it is reasonable, of course, to use the built-in mechanism in a cloud, uh, which is shutting down the system. Remember, you are paying only for, for what you are using. Um, ensure that, uh, that you have not only the um, required amount of RAM to support HANA instance, but you also have the capacity and throughput on disks and network uh, interfaces. We will be talking about uh, disks in a separate slice, but it's worth mentioning that uh, this is something that you have to keep in mind. And sub recommends that we, we, we use service uh, that will be utilized only in 65% um, and leave the, the room for, for, for some uh, peaks on site. When we have service, we also have disks. And um, again, the key word is, is SAP certification. Um, SAP does not allow to use uh, uh, HDD disks. We only allow to use uh, premium disks. Um, and uh, and throughput of the disk is, is key um, key factor here. Every disk in Azure, every family of disks in Azure can have uh, different um, uh, throughput and IOPS uh, defined. If, um, the, the bigger the disk is, the more the disk is, the better in performance it is as well. But sometimes it's more economical to use smaller disks and put them into um, uh, LVM, for example, in Linux, and distribute the load uh, this way because it adds up the IOPS and it adds up the throughput. So if you if you put a lot of smaller disks, you, you can get uh, more IOPS, more throughput, more storage space than if you could if you could use if you use uh, the bigger uh, server in one as a one uh, bigger disk as a one disk. Yeah, sorry for that. Uh, so this is the general rule of thumb. Um, then it is recommended to use write accelerator is again a function of M series uh, servers and especially applicable to logs. Uh, there is a HANA slash HANA slash log uh, catalog which should be hosted on a disk with uh, write accelerator enabled. Right. We talked about shared storage um, a bit, and we mentioned about NFS clusters. So central services and messaging and uh, dispatch, they, to, they have to exchange the information. Uh, only one instance of those central services can be um, um, active at the time. So we need to be sure that the other server is ready to to uh, take over the action, has all the information, and um, yeah, has the, all the information. 
So NFS cluster is the first um, choice or traditional, it was the first choice because of its reliability. However, when you do the NFS survey itself, a cluster itself, you have to be maintaining this as well. So it's a little bit additional overhead. The alternative for that is, uh, for example, Azure Fireshare. It seemed to, be, seemed to be very cheap, very effective and uh, simple solution, but it's not suitable for every scenario. Basically due to um, um, well, low volume, low capacity of uh, Azure Fire, uh, Fire Shares, it can be used in lower environments and smaller environments, but it's not recommended to be used in a production or larger environments. The other alternative is shared disks. This is a uh, quite of a new feature of, of Azure where you can use disk mounted into two uh, virtual servers. It's most uh, more cost effective uh, solution. However, it's not as much reliable as NFS cluster on or last on the list uh, NetApp files because of the single point of failure. Although Microsoft um, is keeping their disk secure um, and they have like 69s uh, and 99.49s of um, SLA, but it's SLA for um, data, um, I'm sorry, uh, that the data will not be, be lost, right? But it's not SLA for the uh, accessibility of data. So it is not that uh, it's 69s and you will never lose the data, never, never feel never experienced the disk failure is the data sustainability, uh, which is guaranteed and not the data accessibility. So it's better to use other solutions, but it is available uh, shared disks. And the last, the most uh, flexible and then the most <laughs> expensive solution is NetApp files. It's kind of a hosted version of NFS, I would say with additional benefits. Um, you cannot uh, um, additional protection, additional security to NetApp files. It's a quite good solution, but on the other hand, quite expensive. So at the end of the day, it's probably reasonable to stick with NFS cluster that you manage yourself. But again, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of uh, individual cases. You have to think about the cost, think about um, how mature you are with the system administration if you, if you are capable to, uh, to having the cluster on yourself. Um, when we have cluster, of course, we have to think about uh, solutions like Peacemaker, uh, also Windows um, solutions that makes the cluster stable. If you have disks, then what about the um, OS? Operating system. And here we have a um, few options to choose from. Um, the most common is to use Linux with SUSE flavor. The less common is uh, use Windows, and somewhere in the middle is Red Hat. Why SUSE? Probably because it's a feature of um, um, zero downtime, you know? so you can you can uh, watch all the systems and, and make some changes without uh, or limiting the downtime. And it's more optimized for SAP um, workloads anyway. Second, um, the Red Hat system also catch up. It is enterprise great solution, so you can use uh, Red Hat as well, but it's less popular than, um, than um, SUSE. And lastly, Windows, um, I'm not sure, and I believe it's not uh, true that HANA is working on Windows. It's rather Linux dedicated uh, database, so you cannot use Windows with HANA, but I'm not 100% sure there. So don't, don't keep me honest on that. Uh, rule of thumb is to use homogeneous environments. So whenever you choose uh, Linux, or Windows, whenever you choose SUSE or Red Hat, just stick with that in every of the virtual machines you use. Um, what about the um, increasing the reliability? This picture we all know very well. 
Um, and we talked about uh, about uh, certain aspects of that. We're not using single server. We're trying to eliminate single point of failure. Although Microsoft is giving quite uh, good protection for even single servers, uh, so the built-in uh, built-in self healing and and ninety point nine for SLA it is good, but it's not enough. Never for production servers. So we use um, HA solutions, we replicate servers, uh, we increase uh, SLA using that. We use availability sets and availability zones, which we will talk about a little bit uh, later. And of course, as I mentioned at the very beginning, we use two um, regions and we do proper disaster recovery from the beginning. Um, and the high availability is different on different uh, levels. The application servers are the simplest one. So you just multiply, multiply the servers and, and that's it. They're dummy servers. They do not require special attention. Just, just put another machine and that's it. Uh, dispatcher will pick it up. Central services, as we mentioned, clustering and database uh, replication, but it's strongly recommended to use a uh, native uh, replication solution to move the data between databases rather than synchronizing the um, synchronizing it on the OS level. It's way better to use the HANA system replication than within other me mechanisms. As for availability sets, um, we try to have the, um, the availability sets for layers, right? So we protect each layer separately, right? So we distribute um, application servers and availability sets and availability zones. We separate separately. And we, we have the another availability zone for uh, central services, for NFSs and for databases. So we never use all in ones, but we start to try to separate it into layers. This is the, uh, the rule of thumb. Um, with availability zone, um, availability zone, it's not disaster recovery solution, right? Although we have the separation between different units of of um, of the region, so one zone is in one data center. I would say the other zone is another data center, but it's not disaster recovery. Solution. They, are, they are too close together. It's like tens of kilometers. Um, so in case of uh, you know, major power outage or, or bombing that we have in Ukraine, it's not the disaster recovery solution. We have to use separate region and have the another um, part of the SAP solution, like 100 kilometers uh, from away, away from primary solution rather than having it in availability zones. So availability zone is, is good. We should definitely use that, distribute the primary NHA node, but it's not a disaster recovery solution. When we have availability zones, uh, availability sets, distribute uh, a load between different um, computing units, I would say, uh, some components need to be close together. Um, and um, to be sure that they are moved together, right? So between uh, availability uh, sets and entities, we use proximity placement group. So with proximity placement group, we are sure that uh, servers are moved in groups and not separately. And this limits uh, the latency, which is very, very important in SAP, uh, SAP solutions. Okay. Uh, with disaster recovery, we mentioned about that uh, a little bit. Application servers and ASCS can be protected with uh, just simple site recovery, which is synchronize the state of, of the virtual machines uh, to the other side, and that's, that's enough, right? With database, we use uh, HANA system replication, and in this case, it is a synchronous uh, replication due to the distance and the latency. And with NFS a solution, we could probably want to use file replication, R sync, or at least cloud sync to move the data to another, another uh, site, it is probably not good to use um, site recovery to, to do 
NFS synchronization because this can corrupt the data. Um, yeah, we, we talked about that earlier. So we have uh, ISR, we have uh, site recovery, and we have inactive components on the other side just to save costs. Monitoring. It's a good example of, of um, strong relationship between Microsoft and SAP. Uh, Microsoft itself, it has quite good monitoring solution as a monitor, which has a lot of features. However, with SAP system, it's not suitable. It's not enough. Uh, SAP itself is giving the um, Solman uh, solution, solution manager, which is the monitoring tool for every component of SAP uh, landscape. It is way better than uh, Azure Monitor. However, those two um, work on slightly different domains. So Azure Monitor can be used to take a quick look at the infrastructure and Solman um, is only for SAP itself. It's a very good tool, but it sees the SAP inside. What is inside the SAP? So how connect those, those, two, um, those two together? So Microsoft has developed something that is called um, Azure Monitor Extension for SAP. It's a tool that, um, that brings those two worlds together. Usually we have in SAP landscape, usually we have strong ABAP programmers, strong SAP community or team, and then smaller infrastructure team. So the SAP team takes the lead and the infrastructure team has to adjust. So in this setup, in this um, picture, it's better to equip SAP guys with uh, information about the infrastructure than the other way around. They will probably better understand uh, infrastructure than infrastructure guys understanding the SAP uh, itself. I tried, it's, it's hard. <laughs> Uh, so monitor extension brings the data from Azure Monitor to Solman and then reach the, the, the view that Solman has, the very rich view with the uh, perspective of the infrastructure. It looks very good at the moment. Can we go in even further? So we have SAP on, on Azure, we have it secure, we have it uh, in Azure environment, disaster recovery, we have all the uh, performance um, features that we can use, but what to do next, right? Of course, SAP itself, although it's, it's a very good system, it, um, it can be supplemented with other things like um, enriching system with, uh, uh, with the communication, with uh, data from different sources, you can take the data from different sources. Uh, you, can, you can export data to, to another services. You can precise data with Logica, for example. So there's, there are a lot of services that we can use to just manipulate the data taken from SAP or get the data from outside world and support it to SAP. And there are some examples of that. So we have uh, on the left side, we have uh, on-prem data sets data um, on-prem data solution uh, with, for example, uh, IoT with some kind of an external system. We can feed that to, to data factory, to data bricks, have those um, major data processing steps like ingestion, uh, prepare, transform, serve, virtualize, and so on and so on. And Azure can, can work with that uh, as well. It's not only Azure itself, um, because remember Azure, Azure from Microsoft, or Microsoft Offer, there are actually three clouds. We have Azure Cloud, we have um, um, Office 365, and we have Dynamics. And we can use three of those clouds to uh, visualize the data, to transfer the data, to get the communication channels and so on. So on. Another example is, is uh, Power Platform. This is a world of Office 365 Cloud when you have the low code, I would say, solutions when you just can uh, uh, process the data in a simple way, visualize it with the Power BI. It's very, very uh, robust uh, platform, the Power BI. And you can apply the, the additional levels of control, right? So Cloud itself gives us the 
good um, security um, solutions, they give us ability to, to put governance on top of the, the data. Uh, additional controls like um, um, connected to, to the external security providers, for example, right? So there are other things we can do with, with Azure itself, with the plat uh, platform, with the data that goes, comes from SAP through uh, Azure solutions. This picture summarizes a little bit domains and tools that we can use um, in each of the domain. So I'm leaving it for the reference um, to you later on. Um, how to move SAP to cloud? Well, there are a few scenarios, right? Think about um, traditional uh, SAP landscape or, or customer with uh, this uh, coil co the stove in the basement and how to move this traditional SAP to, uh, to, to HANA into uh, a cloud. Well, the most optimal one, uh, there are several of them, the most optimal one uh, seem to be um, to move it one-to-one, -one, lift and shift matter to the cloud, because it's easy to provision the servers um, in a cloud, transfer the data, and then build another solution with HANA um, database, migrate the data this way. Why to use this approach? Because it's easier to have traditional server system and a HANA system closer together, and it's easier to transfer data, the latency is, is lower, the connection can be better. The other approach, of course, is to migrate it uh, uh, from traditional database to HANA on-site. It is more challengeable because you have to have a server that uh, can have the HANA database on it. And as remember, it's probably need to be bought. <laughs> so it's not a very optimal solution. Um, the good uh, approach seems to be moving from traditional server to HANA server and migrated together with, uh, with the cloud migration. So we have two migrations combined to that together, cloud migration and uh, HANA migration. It's possible, it's, <laughs> I'm not recommending that because we have two uh, sources of problems, right? Two migrations, so it's, it's possible, but it's not uh, optimal. Again, I recommend to use uh, lift and shift with traditional databases and then migrated to, to HANA and decommissioned the, the uh, service for traditional uh, databases, for the traditional uh, SAP systems. There are a lot of documentation of subsite sub uh, about Azure as well. The only downside is you have to have SAP ID, so you have to be a customer of SAP. Uh, but also Microsoft. Um, is giving their uh, approach. There are a lot of uh, examples, a lot of scripts, uh, both in Terraform and in ARM templates on how to uh, create, provision, develop the solution on Azure. So I encourage you to take a look at uh, Microsoft GitHub. GitHub. Uh, and, um, and I mentioned also the um, um, SAP templates, right? So SAP has this marketplace. I'm not sure if it is available publicly or you have to use uh, SAP ID, I don't remember that. But there are a lot of um, uh, ready to use solutions that you can click out and provision on, on SAP infrastructure. And benefit of that is that SAP is giving you, um, they have this fancy name for that, but it's kind of a, portion of dummy data. So you can provision the infrastructure and load this dummy data to, to the infrastructure and have a demo ready in a in short period of time. Of course, it's not uh, disaster recovery, it's not uh, uh, connected with uh, external sources, it's not um, hooked up into the enterprise uh, infrastructure, but it's 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 good um, starting point for just demoing uh, the solution. That brings us to the end of my presentation. Are there any questions, comments, insults?
All right, probably not. If you have some questions later on, feel free to contact me. Uh, I work for Critical Services and I'm reachable through my email or through my phone that you have on the, on the screen. So thank you for your attention. I'll do it back to you.